الرحمن الرحيم صباح الخير برحب بحضراتكم جميعا في المؤتمر ال15 للريجونال انيفرسري ريجونال انيوال اسامبلي للايجيبشن ساينتفيك سوسايتي اوف برونكولش بالعصالة عن نفسي وبالنيابة عن كل مجلس الإدارة بشكركم على الحضور وطبعا هو شكر من يعني بنشكر نفسنا لكن الحقيقة لازم أشكر الإخوة الزملاء اللي كانوا مسؤولين وما زالوا عن تنظيم المؤتمر السنة دي أستاذ الدكتور أشرف حاتم والأستاذ الدكتور أحمد الحديدي أستاذ الدكتور أحمد الحلفاوي والأستاذ الدكتور رائف إمام uh, This is the first session Meet the expert diagnosis of mediastinal lymphadenopathy بيسعدني ويشرفني to co-chair this session with Professor Ahmed Al Hadidi and Professor Muhammad Galal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bil asala an nafsi wa bil niyaba an aada ism al-sadr fi kulli tib al asr al-aini. Yusaidni wa sharifni na arahab bi kul al-asadza wa al-zumala. اللي مشرفنا النهاردة وبالذات الأساتذة اللي جايين من خارج مصر On behalf of uh, chest section I welcome all the chest physicians and professors uh, especially coming from abroad uh, The first talk will be about endoscopic ultrasound bronchoscope guided fine needle aspiration EBUS fine needle asparish. Uh, the first speaker will be Professor uh, Serma Simra. Simra. Serma uh, Belachi Belachi Group. Uh, she is one of the eminent professors in uh, IBAS and she is the head of uh, Intervention Pulmonology Association and the European Association of Bronchology. It's okay, huh? It's PDF. Is it okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> dear colleagues, dear friends, today my topic is EOSP fine needle aspiration in diagnosis of mediastinal lymphadenopathy which is using flexible uh, bronchoscope for uh, the EBUS bronchoscope inside esophagus to do fine needle aspiration and not using the uh, conventional uh, the esophageal uh, ultrasound bronchoscope. Uh, using the same scope for EBUS, we are putting it inside the esophagus and doing fine needle aspiration. In the flexible bronchoscopy, uh, the most important innovations are the invention of flexible bronchoscope by Ikeda, Shikedo Igeta, and then in 1993, the invention of esophageal ultrasound. Uh, and in 2003, the real-time uh, tBNA, which is done awesome. by EBUS bronchoscope. Then comes 2014 guidelines for uh, staging lung cancer, and in ACCP guidelines that is published in 2014, it says in patients with high suspicion of N2 and N3 involvement, either with discrete venous tunnel lymph node enlargement uh, of PET uptake and no distant metastasis, a needle technique and the bronchial ultrasound, EBUS needles, uh, aspiration, uh, or EUS, fine needle aspiration, or combination of these methods, is recommended over surgical staging as a best first test. And then in 2015, there are guidelines coming. Uh, this, these guidelines is made by uh, European Gastroenterology Society, ERS and ESTS, and it also recommended, recommends 
EUSB uh, plus EBUS fine needle aspiration uh, in staging of lung cancer before doing uh, staging by surgical methods. In my talk, my main topics will be endobronchial ultrasound, but I will just touch endobronchial ultrasound since Dr. Becker uh, will elaborate on this topic. Uh, my main topic will be esophageal ultrasound plus the concept of complete EBUS staging in lung cancer and also in diagnosis of B9 mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Uh, I will touch to some points on 2015 non small cell lung cancer staging algorithms, and then I will mention about questions to be solved. As you know, all know, diagnosis and staging of lung cancer involves correct diagnosis, that is important, and involves subtyping and molecular diagnostics. There should be optimal staging according to the TNM staging, and it should be updated staging uh, rules, and it should be also good for the patients uh, having a single endoscopy session and doing a complete staging, plus this, these methods should be cost-effective. According to the ACCP guidelines, there are four different types of radiographic appearances for lung cancer. Extensive infiltration, uh, a central tumor with N1 involvement, but the mediastinum is not involved, discrete N2, N3 enlargement, but with no primary tumor appearing, and also peripheral stage uh, lung cancer with a peripheral nodule with no hyalur or mediastinal involvement. In all of these, of course, we can use imaging methods such as CT and PET-CT, but they have false negatives and false positives. Only for extensive infiltration, maybe their false positive and false negative rate is very low, but for the other three, only imaging methods are not sufficient. Uh, for CT and FDG PET, especially for the CT, the diagnostic sensitivity is, as you see, is very low. Specificity is around 80%. Diagnostic performance integrated PET CT. Uh, again, sensitivity is a little bit higher than CT, but not enough. It's around 73%. And the specificity is around 92%, but there are false positives. Uh, of course, we have to add a tissue diagnosis onto these imaging methods. The most conventional and traditional one is conventional tBNA. Uh, there is a meta-analysis done. The diagnostic yield uh, in staging and diagnosis of lung cancer uh, of conventional tBNA is not so high, 39 to 78 percent. Then comes EBUS tBNA. Uh, it can approach upper and lower paratracheal lymph nodes, bilateral hyalur lymph nodes, subcarinal lymph nodes, but it cannot uh, get samples from uh, stations 8, 9, 5, and 6. So it cannot do complete staging. Uh, there are studies done. I'll just mention about a few studies. The uh, average diagnostic yield in staging is 85 to 100 percent. It's not always 100 percent. There are many different studies, and the negative predictive value is 76 percent. So we are having considerable number of false negatives with just doing EBUS tBNA in nodal staging. Uh, for higher diagnosis and staging, EBUS has again uh, a diagnostic sensitivity around 90%, specificity 100%, no important complications. And for uh, cytological specimens collected by EBUS tBNA, it's shown that uh, cytological specimens are as good as histological specimens for molecular analysis. So what is the appropriate diagnostic PET? CT, PET-CT, mediastinoscopy, or the combination of EUS uh, fine needle aspiration plus EBUS tBNA? Uh, from this uh, table, which is published in CHESS in 2013, you see that the highest diagnostic sensitivity is by the combination of these EUS fine needle aspiration and EBUS tBNA and the specificity is 100%, negative predictive value is 96%.
Let's go to esophageal ultrasound, EUS pine needle aspiration. Uh, we have to know the anatomy well when we are doing all bronchoscopic procedures. Uh, for esophageal ultrasound guided pine needle aspiration, we have to know that esophagus is in the back of trachea, close approximately to the trachea. In some points, it's close to lung, aorta, esoph uh, diaphragm, uh, liver, left kidney, and the left adrenal gland. Uh, in these locations, if there are any metastases or diseases, it can be approached by using esophageal ultrasound, and we can sample it by using pine needle aspiration through the esophagus wall. Uh, these figures are showing uh, where to sample the lymph nodes by using EBUS, uh, TBNA, or EUS pine needle aspiration. As you see, As you see, upper and lower, the upper paratracheal lymph nodes are mostly uh, sampled by EBUS tBNA. In some situations, they can be sampled by EUS fine needle aspiration, uh, but for 4L, for 7, 8, and 9 stations, EUS fine needle aspiration is successful. For station 5, it's controversial whether EUS pine needle aspiration gets samples because we have to go through the aorta. It's kind of not so safe, but there are some studies showing this. Uh, for bilateral hilar lymph nodes, we have to approach by using EBUS tBNA. So when we are doing our procedures, we have to know which stations can be sampled best which, with which method, and then we can combine them. Uh, Esophageal ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration in mediastinal lymph nodes gives a sensitivity of 90% and specificity of 97 to 100% if the lymph node side is larger than 1 cm. If the lymph node side is smaller than 1 cm, the sensitivity drops uh, considerably to 58%. Uh, EOS spine needle aspiration can be used in intrapulmonary tumors if that tumor in the lung is close in close uh, neighborhood to the uh, esophagus. In different studies, it's shown to be uh, sensitive uh, uh, of about 97 to 100% uh, in non-smensual lung cancer. Uh, EU, use of EOSB using flexible bronchoscope for EBUS uh, inside the esophagus to get tissue from the uh, stations uh, through the esophagal, esophageal wall. Uh, of course, we can use EBUS tBNA for left paratracheal lymph node, but if the lymph node is very small and the access to the lymph node is not so easy with EBUS bronchoscope through the bronchial wall, we can use the EBUS bronchoscope inside the esophagus and approach left paratracheal lymph node more easily, and it's between the left pulmonary artery and aorta. Aortic invasion can be shown only by EUS fine needle aspiration because we cannot approach, uh, cannot see aortic invasion with EBUS bronchoscope through the bronchial uh, wall. It's not uh, close to uh, bronchial wall. U.S. fine needle aspiration can be used for left adrenal gland lesions, especially for metastasis from lung cancer. And in different studies, it's shown that the sensitivity in showing the metastasis in uh, left adrenal gland uh, is more than 86% and negative predictive value is 70%. And Yoko Anima and colleagues have used EBUS scope inside the esophagus to get tissue from the left adrenal gland metastasis. It's shown here, and they say it's feasible uh, if the patient is not too tall, of course, because the EBUS bronchoscope is short. But in that case, if it's the patient is tall, uh, esophageal ultrasound can be used too. Use of EUS or EBUS scope, uh, what, what to use? If target lymph node can be reached by both EUS and EBUS, these stations are 4L and 7. Both methods can be used to reach 4L and 7. It depends on the performer. 
So what is the advantage of EUS over EBUS? There is no cough in esophagus. It's easier uh, to do pine needle aspiration because in esophagus there is no cartilage in the wall. And more time for on-site cytology because it's shown in studies that EUS pine needle aspiration takes less time than EBUS pine needle aspiration. And it's also preferred by the patients because you are having one session of endoscopy for both procedures. When we compare EUS and EBUS, uh, guided fine needle aspirations, we can do mediastinal staging for N2 and N3 by using both methods. For mediastinal restaging, we can use both, but both of them are not as successful as doing the primary staging. Higher staging can be done only by EBUS fine needle aspiration, but not by EUS. Intrapulmonary tumors can be approached by EUS and EBUS fine needle aspiration, depending on the position, location of the lesion inside the uh, lung. Aortic invasion can only be shown by EUS, and left adrenal gland can be approached by only EUS. So why don't we use only mediastinoscopy in ACCP guidelines in 2013, there is a meta-analysis meta showing that the diagnostic sensitivity of mediastinoscopy in staging lung cancer is 81%. There is no false positive, specificity is 100%, but negative predictive value is 91%. So there are false negatives. It's not complete, not 100% sensitive. And Yama, uh, Yuka and Hima and colleagues uh, published a study comparing mediastinoscopy versus endosonography. Here endosonography means combining EUS with EBUS fine needle aspiration. And the results show that surgical staging has a sensitivity of 79% versus uh, endosonography plus surgical staging. 94%. Doing first endosonography, if it's negative, doing surgical staging and combination uh, gives a considerably high yield and negative predictive value increases from 86 to 93% if we use the combined method. And in the same study, here we can see the results, mediastinoscopy, 79%, combined uh, EUS EBUS, 85%. Combined EUS EBUS first, if it's negative, doing surgical staging, it has the highest yield, 94%. And there is a cost-effectiveness study done uh, on the uh, results of the study I just have mentioned, which is called ASTER study. Uh, this cost-effectiveness study showed that doing endosonography first, and if the results are negative, doing surgical staging uh, is more cost-effective than doing immediate surgical staging in lung cancer, in non-small cell lung cancer. Why are not we doing only EBUS tBNA? Why are we using EOS, EOS fine needle aspiration? Again, in chest, in the meta-analysis, as you can see here, the sensitivity, the pooled sensitivity of EBUS fine needle aspiration is 89% with 100% specificity, but 91% negative predictive value. Again, false negatives. There is no false negative, but there are false. Uh, there is no false positive, but there are false negatives with just only EBUS tBNA. Uh, Huang Bo and colleagues published a study in 2010 in chest, and this study uh, compared single EBUS tBNA uh, with EBUS tBNA plus USB fine needle aspiration using the same EBUS scope, and it showed that the diagnostic yield increases from 84 to 91 percent, and negative predictive value also increases. Uh, Felix Ert uh, and colleagues also did a similar study, and again, sensitivity and negative predictive value increase, increased. And another study by Oki and colleagues, similar results, sensitivity uh, and negative predictive value increases uh, when we combine these two methods using the same EVA scope. Pooled sensitivity in a meta-analysis by uh, Zhang and colleagues also showed similar results. Uh, combined EBUS tBNA with EUSB fine needle aspiration gives a sensitivity of 91% and a negative predictive value of 96%, almost approaching 100% with no false positives. And the latest guidelines coming 
uh, from the European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, uh, ERS, and European Society of Thoracic Surgeons, also recommends uh, for mediastinal staging, uh, and the sonography is recommended over surgical staging as the initial procedure, and this is grade A recommendation. And subsequent surgical staging is recommended when endosonography does not show malignant nodal involvement. And they had four different types of um, uh, stages or radiographic appearances for uh, staging. One is peripheral lung cancer, normal mediastinum, ipsilateral hilar node involvement, and tumor is less than three centimeters. Or the tumor is less than three centimeters. Uh, it's avid on PET, no involvement on PET no mediastinal or hyalur involvement, or the tumor is greater than three centimeters with uh, negative mediastinum and no hyalur involvement, or the tumor is very central uh, uh, but with no mediastinal involvement. In all of these, this, these recent guidelines recommends complete staging of the mediastinum using EOSP uh, plus EBUS fine needle aspiration. Uh, complete staging with an EBUS scope, when we are doing this, we should first use, if possible, EBUS. Start on the right side at lymph nodes, such as 4R, 2R. We can overlap EBUS with EUS on stations 4L or 7. It depends on which, pro which uh, esophagus or brocus will be used. Uh, it depends on the performer. And sampling should be, we should be careful to sample first N3, then N2, N1, and the tumor. So the worst stage uh, lymph node should be uh, sampled first. But at times, it may be needed that we do EUS fine needle aspiration first, and then go and do EBUS TBNM. Uh, so this is an algorithm showing if there is suspected lung cancer suggested locally advanced disease uh, by PET-CT or uh, CT, mostly PET-CT is used and there is no distant metastasis. Uh, this is a, a patient for candidate for lung resec uh, resection and then we can use single scope, EBUS scope, uh, for mediastinal staging. Step one, EBUS, then EUSB. Uh, and the staging is done on imaging, uh, involve, I mean, the involvement on imaging. And stations 4L, 4R, and uh, 7 are sampled routinely. And in centrally located tumors, the presence and absence of uh, mediastinal tumor is also shown. And, okay, I won't go. Time finished? Continue. I have a few. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is just the algorithm I just mentioned uh, in the previous slides. And uh, USB fine needle aspiration is not used in B9 media uh, lymphadenopathy in many studies, or not many studies are published on in B9 media lymphadenopathy using USB fine needle aspiration, but there are some. Oki and colleagues showed that. It is very uh, uh, sufficient and successful in sarcoidosis, uh, in stage one and two sarcoidosis. And if we combine USB with EBUS TBNA, the diagnostic yield approaches to 90%. And there are different studies. Most of the studies are done for lung cancer, but there are some patients in those <coughs> studies having sarcoidosis or tuberculosis. But the uh, diagnostic uh, performance of EOSP fine needle aspiration has to be shown in mediastinal lymphadenopathy due to benign, benign disease in further studies. This is another study mentioning about uh, some patients having benign lymphadenopathy during uh, EBUS TBNA procedures. Uh, there are some patients having <coughs> EOS fine needle aspiration too. There are not important complications due to uh, EOSB fine needle aspiration, but as the procedures are getting being used more and more, infectious complications are mentioned and the di uh, complication rate is low. Uh, it can be in studies about 4%. Infection is seen mostly in necrotic lesions. If the lesion is necrotic, be careful, it can get infected, and there should be less puncture done, and maybe use of rose is better 
to decrease the complications. And in cystic lesions also, we have to be careful. They get infected. And if there is some abnormal uh, thing or there is abnormality in the esophagus, complication risk can increase. I won't go further. Maybe there will be questions because I have other slides, but I don't want to take time. Thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, the uh, summary is that we can combine EBUS tBNA and esophageal uh, ultrasound-guided fine needle aspiration uh, to increase our diagnostic yield and negative, uh, post-negative results can be decreased in lung cancer staging, but also in mediastinal uh, lymphadenopathy that is due to B9 disease. Thank you so much, Professor Semra, for your excellent expose. Because we are far beyond the scheduled time, we'll keep the questions till the end of the session. Professor Semra is one of the sincere colleagues of the Oncology Board. It's my own and a pleasure to introduce another sincere friend to the Board of Bronchology, Professor Henry Baker. Professor Henry Baker, he is the uh, Director, Department of Pulmonology, Internal Medicine, Interdisciplinary Endoscopy, and he's a visiting professor, Harvard Medical School, Boston, Clinical Professor, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Clinical Professor, St. Marina University, Kawasaki, Japan, and originally Thorax Clinic at Heidelberg University School of Medicine. The topic of Professor Baker is EBUS. Please, Professor Baker. Thank you for the invitation and the kind introduction. Next time it will be much shorter because uh, I'm retired for more than four years now. So, uh, uh, no more academic affiliations. Um, as I'm retired, I don't have uh, practical experience with one of the topics I'm talking about, which is elastography, so I'm relying on the information of friends and uh, the literature within this topic. Otherwise, uh, I have been involved in all these things. When in 1989, uh, I saw these kinds of lesions with compression of the trachea. I always asked myself, is there infiltration or not? And as I was a resident in uh, gastroenterology, here you see me, um, I used the transissive gel ultrasound, the radial probe, but as the trachea in front of the radial probe was causing a shadow, you couldn't see the anterior mediastinum. So at the World Congress in 1989, Kyoto and Tokyo, I approached Olympus company to develop uh, some kind of ultrasound device for the central airways. And obviously we needed, we couldn't put the gastroesophagoscope uh, uh, into the airway, so we needed smaller probes. And these were the miniature probes. We had uh, several devices to test and to look for the anatomy of the central uh, airways. And then uh, finally we came up with the miniature probe with a balloon catheter to have surround uh, view into the mediastinum. And the principle is you send out ultrasound waves to the mediastinum, they are reflected and the structures are transformed into grayscale images. Uh, so the question was, is it just another expensive toy or is it useful? Um, as you can see, all the lymph nodes, Semra showed that uh, most of the lymph node stations are in close vicinity to the, uh, the tracheobronchial tree. So uh, it's easy once you're in the movie, I don't know whether it works. So it's easy to uh, uh, approach these lymph nodes with the uh, needle aspiration and to even get uh, histological specimens. This is uh, histological specimens with candylomas from sarcoidosis. Um, when we added endobronchial ultrasound to uh, tBNA in contrast to uh, what I call CT-guided uh, tBNA, we could improve the results to close to 90%. 
Um, the, uh, and as we started with endobronchial ultrasound uh, tBNA, you see in our hospital as the numbers of Ibus tBNA increased, the numbers of uh, mediastinoscopy significantly decreased. And what we saw uh, now from the figures shows that worldwide is the, this is the case. Um, I wondered whether I could, from the image, see whether uh, cancer was invading the lymph node and ask the thoracic surgeons to give me lymph nodes from, post -op uh, from operative specimens, but you see that I could never uh, find uh, uh, significant changes inside the lymph nodes because frequently you have so many um, changes by sarcoidosis, by old tuberculosis, scars, anthracosis, that it's overlapping the uh, cancer cells. So already in 1994, we had the first lectures about uh, the uh, development of endobronchial ultrasound. And finally, after we were convinced in 1996 uh, that ultrasound was useful, uh, we published that it's a useful tool, and in 1995, we received the uh, Congress Award of the German Association for uh, Ultrasound in Medicine uh, long before the pulmonar pulmonologist realized the uh, advantages of endobronchial ultrasound. And then we had multi-standard study groups in Japan, and we had in 2000, we had a live transmission of endobronchial ultrasound. Uh, from uh, Heidelberg to the Congress Center in Yokohama. So the summary was that IBUS improves the yield uh, for transportal needle aspiration, is less invasive, best first uh, diagnostic method, and even as uh, Samra showed, uh, molecular analysis is uh, um, uh, possible with that. But uh, pulmonologists, even after 10 years of experience, didn't accept the radio probe. It was too delicate. It was uh, not so easy to uh, interpret the uh, images. And uh, the most uh, uh, frequent complaint was, I cannot see whether the needle is inside because I localize the lymph node, then I take out the ultrasound probe, and then I puncture. Uh, and the misconception is they wanted to have the same as the gastroenterologist had. In EUS, uh, TBNA, as the esophagus is a straight organ without any landmarks, you need visual control of your needle. But in the central airways, you have a lot of landmarks, all the cartilage rings, you have spurs, you have branches from uh, the... Uh, the bronchi, and so, so in, uh, in uh, the bronchial system, TBN is much more efficient because you have these landmarks, and this is why CT-guided TBNA already was so successful. I'm sorry, I wanted to show this, but it is not working, it's not integrated. I wanted to show how you localize a lymph node, and then let's say you have a lymph node in the left main bronchus, you find the lymph node at the third intercardiogenesis space, uh, at the uh, nine o'clock position. Uh, it takes so much time, maybe. Yeah, here you see, uh, this is at the left upper lobe. You inflate the balloon. Once you inflate the balloon, it's like sunrise. You see lymph node, another lymph node, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein. So you can exactly localize it. You take out the probe, you go with the needle, you stick the needle into the lymph node and uh, uh, take out the sample. Okay, we can stop the movie. So this is why with this we already had a success rate of uh, uh, close to 90%. But as the pulmonologists demanded an uh, integrated uh, ultrasonic bronchoscope to uh, see the needle transversing, we started with the uh, developing of new instruments. So here we developed a 
double lumen instrument where through one channel you could introduce the ultrasound probe and through the other channel you introduce the needle and with the ultrasound probe you control the needle but as the ultrasound is radial you always have only cross section of the needle and you see only a dot but you, so, you don't see the tip of the needle so this was insufficient for that and so finally we came up with the uh, real time it was controlled uh, TBN as, uh, as you see now. And uh, as you see from a lot of uh, uh, papers that have been published, especially Yasufuku, who is now in uh, Toronto, uh, showed a very high success rate with uh, anthropological ultrasound guided uh, TBNA. But we have to concede that this is uh, one of the most experienced ones. The reality uh, is uh, usually different. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, then we looked uh, in a study, we looked into uh, the so-called uh, normal mediastinum with lymph nodes smaller than one centimeter. And uh, we could show that uh, in quite a significant uh, number of cases, we could find lymph nodes, although the mediastinum was negative. And uh, in quite a number of patients, uh, this changed uh, the procedure uh, and uh, avoided unnecessary thoracic surgery. Um, and here you see the uh, uh, sensitivity uh, it was comparatively high for these small lesions and uh, specificity 100%. Uh, so the question is whether we should do complete staging uh, in all patients, even with negative mediastinum. When we looked into uh, analysis of these cases, we saw that all the patients that had uh, positive lymph nodes in negative mediastinum were adenocarcinoma. So the question is not uh, whether we should uh, mainly do the complete staging uh, also in the normal mediastinum mainly in patients with adenocarcinoma. Um, the uh, SAMRA showed the combination and the results in combination of EWUS and EUS. I don't have to go into this uh, any further, but you see that uh, when uh, you combine EWUS, EUS, you have the best uh, e <coughs> results in uh, metastinal staging and so in an editorial in uh, uh, CHEST in 2012, uh, the statement by Kevin Kovitz was, it was the single most useful pulmonary procedure introduced in decades. Um, to improve the results, uh, there were attempts to look into the, the, the internal structure of the lymph nodes and there were, uh, like the uh, uh, Japanese always do, they are very meticulous. They found a lot of different signs. For me, that was a little bit too complicated. Um, with the new Ebers modalities, the structures could be better analyzed than with the radial probes. Um, as the linear uh, probe with the electronic transducer has a lot of features apart from uh, M, uh, from B mode images. You can have color Doppler, you can have harmonic imaging, uh, and uh, you can have contrast uh, imaging with micro bubbles, contrast medium. Especially, there is a feature called elastophic elastography. What is elastography? It's a non-invasive imaging uh, to see the mechanical characteristics when you put strain by uh, uh, force, by pulsations, by ultrasound onto tissue. Uh, you can uh, see the stress, the stiffness of the tissue. And uh, this is a very complex uh, issue by, well, by which is calculated, but mainly you calculate from the speed of uh, the ultrasound waves traveling to different tissues, normal tissue, cancer tissue, you calculate the stiffness. But you have to put pressure on the uh, tissue. With the endoboroclal <coughs> ultrasound, you cannot put pressure with the ultrasound waves on the tissue, but as you see, the lymph nodes and the mediastinal structures are surrounded by a lot of big vessels and by the heart and the pulsations of the heart and the vessels against the tissue causes uh, the stress on the tissue and then you can calculate the strain that this causes. 
and uh, uh, by artificial calculation by the professor, uh, processor, uh, soft tissues are more on the greenish reddish side, hard tissues, which are cancer tissues, are more on the bluish side. So here you see uh, the lymph node, and here you see the mediastinum. So you look for the uh, stiffness of the lymph node and look for the stiffness of the surrounding mediastinum and compare, and by the relation between these two tissues, you can assess whether probably it's a malignant lymph node or not. Here we have uh, three different samples. Here it's a a greenish reddish uh, lymph node, which is highly suggestive of benign tissue. Here you have uh, mixed colors. You have some very bluish area, so probably you might have a small lesion inside the lymph node that you should approach with your needle, because this might be a small metastasis inside the lymph node, whereas this big lymph node is completely blue, so it's very uh, highly po uh, probable that it's positive. And with this, uh, they looked into the uh, structures, and you could see that uh, elastography uh, adds a lot to uh, histology, so to uh, uh, find your, uh, the, the lesion inside the lymph nodes. Here you see a benign lesion, more uh, greenish, only a little bit bluish, and this is a granuloma whereas uh, in this lesion it's completely bluish, and you see here the uh, cancer cells in the tBNA results. So for the strategy uh, uh, that you are planning when you have all these devices, if both is negative, the elastography and uh, histology is negative, you would go uh, on for surgery if indicated. If both is positive, uh, the decision is made on the stage. If it's uh, uh, N1 lymph node, of course, you can do surgery. If it's N3, you wouldn't do it. And if it's positive and uh, the cytology, histology is negative, I would repeat the TBNA. Uh, of course, in this uh, context, uh, you mentioned that ROSE, rapid on-site evaluation, it helps a lot if you have a cytologist besides you, so can you directly see the smear and have the result while you are still inside the patient and can repeat it. Um, uh, Stefano Gasparini, who is one of the pioneers in this field, uh, he started to train uh, pulmonologists in uh, cytology examination. You don't have to make a real dedicated diagnosis, but you just have to see whether you hit the lesion, you have lymph nodes, and whether you have tumor cells or not, that would be enough. The pathologist could uh, do the further analysis. So with rapid on-site evaluation, you improve the results uh, tremendously. And uh, with regard to elastography, it showed that elastography uh, really adds to endobronchial ultrasound diagnosis uh, to achieve uh, positive um, the results. Uh, the experience with uh, elastography is still limited. Um, the uh, negative uh, predictive value and sensitivity compared to EWS TNA uh, is less. And uh, because of the hardness of the tissue, you can have false, false positives when you have very solid scar tissue or calcifications and you can have false negatives if the tumor is very necrotic, then it's no longer that hard, uh, but uh, we hope that in future this will be improved and we'll have more uh, experience with that to add with this. And with this, I'm closing my presentation. Ikidor, uh, the inventor of the flexible bronchoscope, with his first prototype in 1989 when I started to think about ultrasound. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Becker, for this eminent and interesting presentation. Uh, and now we will go to the next speaker, Professor Ahmed Busila, Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery, Thoracic Surgery Department in Bellefield Academic Teaching Hospital Monster Germany.
And I want to take the chance to thank all the scientific committee members in the Egyptian Society of Bronchology, and also a special thanks to Professor Ahmed al halafawi who invited me to participate in this conference. Uh, and I have a great honor to be with my professor, Dr. Aid al Khattab, and Dr. Ahmed al Hadidi. Thanks. Okay. Um, dear colleagues, uh, Chair, I'm, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to this uh, uh, Congress to visit Omidonia, and uh, I'm uh, going to speak here as a surgeon to physicians. And first of all, before talking about mediastinoscopy, I want to say that um, I consider mediastinoscopy, EBUS, EUS, as um, tools which we use um, according to the patient and according to the section and the hospital equipment which is available. If all are present, as in my institution, um, we are not uh, competitors. We are uh, in one team, working together and seeing what is best for the patient, what is the pathology we are looking for, and accordingly, we choose the method we are using. Um, mediastinoscopy um, is a common procedure, of course, for evaluation of mediastinal lymphadenopathy, for diagnosing thoracic diseases, and, of course, for staging of lung cancer. And um, since its introduction, it has been the golden standard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, uh, um, many years ago, video mediastinoscopy was added to mediastinoscopy, and with the 17 power magnification, we can have more complete sampling of mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh, the very nice thing about video mediastinoscopy is that it is a teaching tool. Everybody can see what I'm doing on the video. The scrub nurses can see what I'm doing. The anesthesiologist can see what I'm doing, and the young colleagues can learn. What are the indications uh, of, mediastinal, uh, of mediastinoscopy? It is the differential diagnosis of lymphadenopathy. We have, first of all, the malignant uh, lesions, which we want to uh, prove or exclude, lymphomas, metastatic carcinoma, wherever, whatever, from which tumor but mostly, of course, for bronchogenic carcinoma. And benign granulomatous disorders, TB and sarcoidosis are the most common. And a lot of patients have just reactive lymphadenopathy, which is associated with chronic conditions like emphysema, chronic bronchitis, interstitial lung diseases, heart failure, and so on. Uh, when we deal with reactive lymphadenopathy, a diagnosis of reactive lymphadenopathy is made only if all pathological sampling and a minimum of six months follow-up failed to yield an alternative diagnosis. Only then we say, okay, it's reactive, there is no tumor, there is no sarcoidosis, no TB, or so on. The indications, the first, um, at least in Western Europe, is for staging of lung cancer, because there it is very common. Um, in our institution, the colleagues who are doing EBUS, when they are suspect lymphoma, they don't even start doing EBUS because our pathologists need big samples to evaluate the lymphoma and the type of lymphoma and so on. So lymphoma patients come directly to the surgeon for mediastinoscopy. Evaluation of lymphadenopathy in relation to granulomatous conditions, such as sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, 
and evaluation of mediastinal adenopathy, as I said, which is reactive lymphadenopathy. The absolute indications in bronchogenic carcinoma, now we are talking just about bronchogenic carcinoma, mediastinal lymph nodes bigger than one centimeter in the chest CT, central tumors, even if mediastinal lymph nodes are below one centimeter, and we did a study and uh, compared when the uh, radiologist told us the lymph nodes in the CT are normal. Their consideration of normal is when the lymph nodes are smaller than one centimeter. And we did uh, mediastinoscopy and EBUS for these patients. The surgeons for the, uh, did the mediastinoscopy, the pneumologist the EBUS, and we found that 20% of the lymph nodes which were um, not suspicious in the CT where had malignant invasion. So do not rely on a CT which is telling you mediastinum is free. A histological staging in bronchogenic carcinoma is essential. Whether it is an EBUS, whether it is mediastinoscopy, whether it is an EUS, we never um, proceed with the treatment of a patient with bronchogenic carcinoma unless we have a complete mediastinal staging, and I'm talking, of course, about surgical treatment. There are some cases, like uh, my first speaker showed, with uh, central tumor invading the mediastinum. It is obvious what he has. No? Um, recently, um, a few years, not recently, the, FD, uh, the uh, PET CT has uh, been increasingly used, and um, unfortunately, many of the physicians and uh, some surgeons rely on this uh, PET CT and say it is positive, so the mediastinum is invaded, or it is negative, so it's free. This is not true. Positive uh, lymph nodes in PET CT does only show high metabolic activity. It does not mean malignant cells are present. And if uh, we have a PET CT positive lymph node, we have to do histological sampling of these lymph nodes, whether by EBUS or by mediastinoscopy. In, um, in patients who are candidates for surgery, who are in a stage where we can do surgery, we do um, mediastinoscopy uh, especially in high-risk surgical candidates, to be sure there, is, there are no mediastinal uh, lymph, um, lymph node metastases. And as, my, as Dr. Becker just said, adenocarcinoma is, um, when we know it's adenocarcinoma, we have to do mediastinal staging because due to increased incidence of, of lymph node metastases. We uh, need also histological sampling of the lymph nodes in cases of restaging non-small cell lung cancer after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. It is a mode of therapy that if the mediastinal lymph nodes, if we have an N2 stage, this is not prohibitive of doing surgery. We do a neoadjuvant therapy and restage after two sessions of chemotherapy and see if the lymph nodes are still, uh, there are still malignant um, uh, invasion or not. So therefore, we have to do a mediastinoscopy or EBUS. And every patient with a small cell lung cancer who is candidate for surgery, I do uh, mediastinoscopy to be sure that he has no N2 and 3 affection because otherwise he is doing a surgery which he will not benefit of. Relative contraindications for um, the mediastinoscopy are considerably enlarged thyroid gland. We cannot go inside because the thyroid is in the way. History of neck irradiation or previous mediastinoscopy because there there is a lot of fibrosis and the dissection is uh, uh, very uh, hard. And uh, of course here the EBUS is a very good um, alternative. We have... Um, a lot of bleeding when we have a superior vena cava syndrome or bleeding disorders, and therefore we prefer 
the EBUS in these uh, conditions. And as my previous speakers showed this slide, we have to know the details of the anatomy of the lymph nodes. This is uh, our second holy book. What are the lymph nodes? Where are the lymph nodes? Where can I reach them? And as we can see here, they are divided into supraclavicular, upper mediastinal, into um, subcarinal, autopulmonary, lower mediastinal, and hilar, interlobar, and peripheral. And the different methods have different uh, um, uh, parts they uh, access and reach. Here uh, I can show you uh, rapidly how the lymph nodes are um, uh, drained in the right lung and in the left lung. We can see that the right lung drains to the right side and 7, 8, and 9, whilst the left lung drains also on the contralateral side. That is something we have to consider while we are sampling. Accessibility, here is uh, what a mediastinoscope can assess. Two, four, right and left, and uh, seven. And if I can show you rapidly the instruments we are using, this is the mediastinoscope we used long ago. Now this is the video media stinoscope, which is, um, these are the instruments, aspiration tube, suction needles, biopsy forceps with which we are doing our uh, surgery. The anatomy must be known. We go in the suprasternal notch. We open the um, fascia on the trachea. And as you can see here, we have to go below the pretracheal fascia to be safe while operating. Then we dissect with the finger until we reach the carina. And you can see we are in, a, in an area where there are many vessels, but we go till the carina. And when we have this space, we go with our mediastinoscope inside it. And we take the biopsies within the fascia, and that is the safest method in order not to injure any vessels. That is to show you how complicated the area is in which we are working. Here is the right main bronchus and the right pulmonary artery immediately below. And the lymph node, this is the typical lymph node, the uh, 4R lymph node, which is the uh, lymph node we m m always find. On the left side, we are more cautious because of the left re la recurrent laryngeal nerve. Therefore, there we do not cauterize, we are very cautious. Then, um, sometimes we could mistake the azygous vein for the lymph node because they are both bluish in color. Therefore, sometimes we have to aspirate before we take a biopsy. This is a video showing how we operate. It's a small incision in the suprasternal notch. We dissect first till we reach the pretracheal fascia, and then with the finger, we make our uh, plane, in which after that, the mediastinoscope will be passed. It's just a small incision. And the suction tube is our best friend there. Here, as you can see, it's not a very good quality, uh, but you can see in the middle the trachea, and we dissect to the right and to the left of it. I have a better uh, video for that. Here, you can see that we can see the lymph nodes. We dissect around them. When there are some vessels, we have sometimes to clip them, sometimes we have to coagulate them in order to take the lymph nodes, and we can even do a complete lymph adenectomy through the mediastinoscope. This is called VAMLA, Video Assisted Mediastina Lymph Adenectomy. So, um, this is the technique we are doing uh, this uh, operation. The percentage of affected lymph node stations, as we can see, 
so in 50% of the cases, we do not find affected lymph nodes. In 20%, one station is affected, and in 17 and 11%, uh, there are two and three stations affected. And of course, uh, as uh, the stage of the bronchogenic carcinoma uh, is higher, the yield is higher, which is logic. When it's a peripheral T1 tumor, the incidence is 11%. When we have central stage uh, tumors, it's uh, higher till 23%. Here again, what can the different procedures reach? We have the EOS uh, fine needle aspiration that goes to seven and eight, which we cannot reach through a mediastinoscopy, and also an EBUS and TBNA cannot reach them. Um, and then the comparison between CT, PET, EBUS, and uh, mediastinoscopy, this is of course, um, Every uh, one has a different sensitivity, specificity uh, in his uh, table. And this, these figures are not 100%. The figures my uh, previous speakers presented are not 100% because it depends on the surgeon or the endoscopist. There are surgeons who do not take all the lymph nodes out, and then they have bad results. There are endoscopists who, with EBUS, have perfect results, but there are others who cannot take all the lymph nodes out. So it is a matter of experience, it's a matter of person who is doing this job, and then these figures change. You can have all figures in the world in these tables. So don't rely on them very much. Of course, also mediastinoscopy can have complications. We have uh, wound infections, very rarely pneumothorax, left recurrent laryngeal nerve injury, um, injury to the esophagus, and hemorrhage from the vessels. You saw how many vessels are around. For the um, um, lymph nodes five, we can do an anterior mediastinoscopy to reach them and uh, uh, to take them out. Um, guidelines uh, published in CHEST uh, say that invasive confirmation of the radiographic stage is recommended, and uh, many invasive techniques, of course, are available. Mediastinoscopy is one of them. And if um, a non-malignant result from a needle technique is found, then we have to do a mediastinoscopy, regardless whether the findings of PET-CT were uh, positive or negative. And invasive confirmation of the radiographic stage is recommended for bronchogenic carcinoma patients. Invasive staging is recommended. In general, mediastinoscopy is suggested, but EUS and EBUS may be a reasonable alternative. In fact, today they are on the march. Um, five years ago, I did uh, double the mediastinoscopes I'm doing today because I have very efficient colleagues who do these EBUS, and um, I think about 50% less mediastinoscopies are uh, necessary nowadays. EBUS is on the march, and my conclusion is that routine mediastinoscopy remains an economically reasonable strategy for mediastinal staging of bronchogenic carcinoma in provisional surgical candidates with excellent sensitivity it is the golden standard. In patients with adenocarcinoma, and that we, we talked about that, and mediastinal nodes of less than one centimeter, PET scanning cannot yet replace mediastinoscopy. EBUS and TBNA is on the march to replace mediastinoscopy in increasing number of patients, but not in all. Mediastinoscopy is the ideal tool for evaluation of lymphoma, as larger tissue samples are often required by the pathologist, and in cases of negative EBUS TBNA sampling, mediastinoscopy is recommended. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Busela, for your excellent expose. Because we are 35 minutes beyond the schedule, uh, so all the colleagues can contact the speakers uh, during the coffee break for their comments and questions.